Puppy? I think so. <laughs> we are back from holiday, ladies and gentlemen. I'm tanned as shit. We are refreshed, recharged, ready to get in a lot of stuff that's happening around the league. Before we do, worked out uh, this holiday I was on in Amazon. Been doing something wrong, I think. Mm-hmm. Which way do you stand in the shower? Facing the taps or facing away from the taps? Well, <laughs> you know... Oh, it'd be something weird. I actually, yeah. I actually bathe. I say bars. <laughs> you know it's going to be something weird. What, oh, but this wasn't even meant to go here. What do you do in the shower? Well, I sit down. Oh, <laughs> my God. What the fuck, Ollie? Cross-legged and then close your eyes and pretend that it's like waking up camping and it's raining. Do you actually? Yeah. So every shower, this is not where – welcome back, everyone. We'll, we'll do this thing in a minute. But So you, when you shower, yeah. you turn it on, you're yeah. standing, and you go, you know what, time to sit down now. Yeah, Correct. For the whole shower. <laughs> For most of it. <laughs> and it's, it's a good temperature regulator because by the time that it hits you, you know, it's not so hot anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, mate, I wouldn't be the only one. You would be the only one that we, if we ask all listeners, the only person that would say for every shower, <laughs> for the whole shower, I turn the taps on and I sit down. Yeah. You reckon? So you do it wrong. You're okay. Out. So what do you do? What do you well, do? Well, I what I do is I I put the shower on and I face the taps. Yeah. And I was told that's wrong. Oh wow. And well, it's like every time I walk in, like, and you're having a shower, it looks like you're in the naughty corner, and you're yeah. upset. Well, you're not facing your enemies. True. Don't it's have like any. feng shui. You know, True. like you got to where the bed is. You got to be looking at the door. Yeah. Well, I just thought I'd start the show by saying, hey, who's doing it wrong? You're doing it completely wrong. You're sitting down to shower, which is just weird. It's but is, am I doing it wrong or is, as a community, are we showering the same way I am? Well, let's put a poll up. No, no. Tell us about your shower. Facing uh, your enemies or yep. facing the taps? I think facing the taps is the go. Or sitting down cross-legged. That's not in. Play the sting. That's definitely not in. Play the sting. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Dan Does Footy Podcast. Dan Does Footy Podcast. You can find more of Dan Does Footy on the website, Spotify, YouTube, and social media. Lids off. See ya. There was heaps of sick kids, and I was like, where are they? Kick them harder. Kick them all harder. Punch them in the face. My bloody horizontally charged, if you get what I mean. As I said, welcome back as he sips from his sippy cup, trying to get the remnants of his coffee. Good to be back. Good energy. Needed a week. Just needed a week. Just needed, just to recharge, I said. Get the energy back. I felt like we've gone for, what was it, seven months we worked out straight? Oh, yeah. Grinding. No one works yeah. harder than us. Nope. Tom Morris does at the moment. He's flat out. And you told me there's some a European oh. chef to guy over there who works hard, hard. I got I gotta say, like, yep, very well done to both, you know, your Clearies, your Morrises. They do yep. work hard in the two weeks of trade period. They're flat Tom is flat out at the moment. But they're no Adam Schefter. Chefty. And they're certainly no Fabrizio. Who is in, Fabrizio? So he is the king of sports journalism, in my opinion. There is nothing that goes unnoticed, and you you don't even Pay any attention to a rumour until you see, here we go. The Fritz. He goes, here we go. On and every go, tweet. Okay, right. Well, only when it's a here we go. Take it to the bank. So what Tom Morris could be doing is a bit of sort of, here okay, we go. so these picks have been moved there. Now Houston's actually having a conversation with Collingwood. Yeah. But it wouldn't be until Tom Morris said, here we go, that you go, right, it's signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah, so we need a journal to start dropping some of that stuff. And yeah. that's when we know it's legit. That's, yeah, 100%. Because a lot of whispers around the moment. Too many. A lot of, mm. this person's going there, a lot of pick swapping. Mm. A lot happening. Before we get into all, and this this episode that we're back into it and footy has stopped, but geez, there's some carnage happening around the league still. We've got players trying to get to their clubs. We've got clubs who have committed to players and said, we'll get you here. Yeah, we'll make it work. Now that's all blown up because something happened on Friday, which was just unbelievable. But also I was in Habits Island tanning, as you can see, YouTubers. Yep. Cat tan it is. Oh, so working out lately. Um, when I was in Hamilton Island, and I put this up, not even thinking that it would blow up the way it did, a guy doing butterfly in the ocean. Sure. The worst stroke and the worst choice of stroke to do ever. Mm-hmm. 
is butterfly. Mm -hmm. I think we can all say it's a freestyle job. Yep. And you just do a freestyle and hold it. There is no reason for you to ever do butterfly. I think you get away, certainly in a hotel pool, I think the preferred stroke is just breaststroke well, in a hotel pool. You say that. Go on. That bloke came into the pool. Yeah. Butterfly. <laughs> in a 10 nah, to 15. Yeah, nah, 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 yeah. Nah, okay. You so can't be doing we're that. doing freestyle, aren't we? Or you saying breaststroke. Well, well I, I certainly think in a hotel pool, it's one of these ones. Like it's just quite. Yeah. You're going from side to side, maybe to the bar, maybe to your partner, whatever it might mm. be. It's very yeah. leisurely. Yeah. But it's that uh, butterfly's way too chaotic. It's so hard, butterfly. Yeah. Who's doing that? Throwing shoulders out? Yeah. Like there's no need to do a butterfly. Doing the mermaid kick as well? Even, even if you do it well, a casual butterfly, you're doing five butterflies and then you're cooked. <laughs> like it's a hard stroke to do. So that's how my break went, mate. Obviously the, the shower thing, which is so weird by you, the butterfly happened, a lot of relaxing, a lot of baby mooning. Yes. Bubba's in there just cooking at the moment. You little, did a little, little bit of little reading. Bubby, little puppy is kicking now. It's kicking hard. <sighs> a little bit of reading. I yeah. did uh, the first six months, which is an eye-opening experience, that book. Mm. There's a lot of stuff happening with the uh, female anatomy. First six months of pregnancy or first six months of Bubba child. into the world. Yep. Yeah, a lot happens. But yeah, um, fair bit would. Yeah, with Bub and with mum. Yep. Learning all about that. Breast engorgement. Yep. That's a big one. Um, mastitis. Yes. Is that wrong? Mastitis. Mastitis. A lot of stuff happening, but exciting times. Not, not know, far off now. I'm not sure if it has this in the book, but this is this is genuine. Um, cabbage leaves on the breasts. Yeah. Reduced for when Bubba's sucking. I'm not going to the milk. Yeah. And when Bubba's on one titty and Daddy's on the other. <laughs> Daddy just Stop sucking on the milk. <laughs> Both of us just sucking milk out. Dan does dairy. I will be trying it. Not off the tit, but in the bottle. Okay, so it would be. Is that weird to say out loud? Should we take no, that bit well, out? No, we could be okay. honest. No, we can put it in. Leave it in. I just... Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't do it from the source of just sort of no, a, a we farm don't know. to table source, situation. That's, yeah, no, no, that's um, that's Bubba's one. Yeah, it's only time. It's a couple months ago. I don't think we've actually told him on the date. How many? Sorry, a couple months. A couple months. Yeah, early early jam. We're looking at. Wow, which is cool. So very exciting times. How was your break, mate? Enough about me. How, what did you do? What did you get up to? New oh. sticker on the laptop. Yeah, got a little saint sticker on the on up the uh, the sainers, up the chopsticks, up the chopsticks. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, look, it was good. It was a bit weird not hearing from you. I just felt like I was sitting in my room making no nos at all, pretending that I don't exist. You sent a very cute message. Hey, I just wanted, I thought I'd leave you alone for a week. Yeah, I was like, you don't need to leave me alone, mate. Come no, on, just it was uh, very maybe nice. a little bit. Well, you know, well, I very much take note of you know other big duos that mm. are out there. You know. Yes. Your Hamish and Andy, big, no one bigger. Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, yes, they do have proper alone time. Yeah, so then they can come back in and be the funniest versions of themselves. Which the energy we're giving, so it's good start, <laughs> right up there. Good start. No, so I just thought I'd give you a bump moment. Um, look, it was gr- it was pretty quiet my week, and then one thing happened, and I am. I'm the. I mean, I'm the players' podcast host. You, well, the players come to the podcast for you. Yeah, and we know that. We Mac know Andrew that. Bailey. Yeah, uh, list the list goes on. Really? Yeah, yeah. Not forever, but mm. <laughs> it goes on a little bit longer. Not Wilkie. And you, Off us completely. No, <laughs> breaking that story. Accidentally, we broke it. Accidentally looked online, but anyway, yeah. No, I'm still. Mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, bizarrely, I had left work. It was after our last recording, and I. Went to Woolies, went and did my shop, and I waited for an Uber. It was about 10, 15 minutes because it was in rush hour. So oh. I went, oh, whatever. I'll sit at the uh, bench across the road from the supermarket. In the suburb we're talking? Uh, Malvin. Malvin. Mm. Mm-hmm. Walks past Tom Mitchell and his wife and dog. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh, you know, I don't know if you're like this, but a real spidey sense with footy players. Yeah. Like I know that they're around at all times. Like you know what I mean? You just go, oh, something's sort of tingling over some, here. It's a player of yeah. some sort around me. <laughs> you know? And I went, yep, there he is. And so his partner went into the supermarket and yep. he waited out the front with the dog and sat next to me. And I'm going, oh, God, this is so embarrassing. If you've embarrassed the show, I swear. <laughs> I'm going, i I got to say something. So I started off with, um, geez, that's a, a very well-behaved dog you've got there because <laughs> the dog wasn't on leave. It's like her on a first date. Yeah. And he went, yeah, yeah, no, cheers. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, no. <laughs> small talk. Awful small talk. And then it went on longer. So we were there for about 10, 15 minutes. I was like, okay, now it's getting stupid. I'm going to regret not saying something. So I said, hey, mate, just 
<laughs> just before I head off, my Uber's here. Um, my name's Ollie. I do the show Dan Does Footy. Yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah, no, I, I, I really like that show. And then he proceeds to go, well, I actually do a show too. What do you think about this? Started asking me questions about the podcast. Picking your brain. Picking my brain. Wow. And I went, well, mate, you know. I'll lie. Mm. You know, <laughs> I know I don't, have, I, I don't have any confidence <laughs> in telling you the truth here. And uh, look, there you, and then now we follow each other. Yeah. Look, we've texted. How's that? You know? Well, he did text you, but you were a bit busy at the one time when he texted you, wasn't he? The first text. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be honest. Here's what happened. And I really will be honest because it's worth it's worth sharing. He messages saying, Hey mate, can I just um can I grab your phone number? I want to give you a call. To ask you a few podcast qu- questions. You actually are the people's like yep. the players pod person. And I and I was thinking, not a problem. We've got the week off. I'm pretty free. You're free. Except I had started a new game on Hogwarts Legacy. So I was just in the <laughs> middle <laughs> I was in the middle of, of quite a hectic battle with a few goblins. Uh and I said to him, Hey mate, not a problem. And I've got the message. I said, not a problem. Just give me five minutes. <laughs> And I had to finish the level. <laughs> to get back to him. And then went, yeah, mate, no worries. Yeah, sorry, just bit on here to, uh, you know, home <laughs> office and all that. Yeah, yeah, flat out. Yeah, yeah flat yeah. out of my anyway, house. How are you? Wow. That, you are amazing, you so, are. You are amazing because you connect with people, with AFL players, like it's nothing. You sit down to shower. You're playing <laughs> You're playing Harry Potter games. And how many, I don't want to talk about this too long because you know how I feel about Harry Potter. How does a game like that work? I tell you. It might actually be the perfect way for you to get into it because essentially this game has been – it took so long to bring out and mm. the reason why is because they've made it like Grand Theft Auto. It's Grand Theft Auto of the Wizarding World. And don't sell that to me because I'm if I can, you, you know, if I can Grand Theft Auto someone, throw them out of a car and drive it off a cliff and I'm in. You go through like lots of stages to, to learn all the, the basic stuff that you you will probably be frustrated at learning, you mm. know, your, your classic charms. It's the Marius. Exactly. Mm. But then you get to learn – the killing curse. Oh yeah, and all of that. So now then I like it. You get to pimp your broom up, and you're flying around the suburbs or the villages, and you go, oh, pick a random, oh, <sighs> bang. Get how, how many stars do you get for that? Like three stars. Well, there are no cops. Oh, no, nah, I'm out then. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing better on Grand Theft Auto than walking into a cop shop and, and just, just spraying life. some bullets, getting five stars, and bolting out of there. You know. And it's a chase for days. And, and then you put the cheat code. Or oh yeah, or that or just hide in a garage, not a problem. <laughs> sure, yeah. And that's how, that's how the it all works the normal CIA, day. CIA, yeah, yeah. went, oh, bastard. Oh, Grand Theft Auto, I tell you what, and other games, I, not games I used to play, but we're getting the footy suit, everyone, who's, who's listening to the podcast just wants their footy We've fix. just got a lot of catching we're up We're getting today. there. I watched the away, when I was away, I watched the Vince McMahon doco. Oh, yep. yep. Very good. Very good. Okay. Well put together. He's a troubled man. Horny bastard. Mm. Horny bastard. And some of the stuff that he did allegedly and definitely did do <laughs> is just like gross. And that business really? has a dark side to it. You should – you used to like wrestling or not? Nah. Oh, okay. So I can see that actually. Yeah. Um, but I remember back in the day wrestling. I used to love wrestling. And then nothing better after you watch Raw mm. and then you say – this is what happened in my world. I'd watch Raw mm-hmm. and then I'd do the Wizzies Would Ya. Sure. And I still have a bit of energy in me. Yeah. So Woodja, who didn't speak a lick of English, as yeah. we know, I'd be like, hey, Woodja, I want to do some wrestling moves on you. You came for that. Just nodding. They had no yeah. idea what I said. Just no. no English. Didn't come out. And then like, because you'd seen something on Raw, you'd do it on your friends. Yeah. So I'd pick Woodja up in like a tombstone and just drop him on his head. <laughs> like it was nothing. That's why he couldn't speak English, mate. <laughs> yeah. But remember those? Like, the, I'm sure people out there do remember that. Like, yeah. you watch him in Raw and be like, okay, I'm going to put Woodrow in a pedigree and just drop on him <laughs> or suplex him. Like, uh, yeah, nothing that better back in the day happened. than doing a bit of backyard wrestling. Yeah, brilliant. And mm. for you, free porn, I would have thought at the time as well. It, it was, yeah, back in the day. That's the first, like, experience of, yeah, um, yeah seeing that kind of stuff. Like, women, it's like, okay. Is that what you said? You said porn, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, you know, women, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Daddy lucky. Yeah. You know? No, I totally understand YouTube that. YouTube gets that. But yeah. yeah, it was. It was great. It was Mine great was oh, I don't know. Go on. <laughs> Please go there. Please. It would be Harry Potter for sure. Nah. Nah. Please go there. I was just going to say my version of that was the cover of the Blink-182 album. Oh, the club. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone knows that one, mate. Everyone knows that. Um, but lots happening. So we've talked about the shower stuff. This, before we get in the foot, this motherfucker, Ned Brockman. Yeah. See what he's doing? I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm with you. I don't understand how he's doing this. So for people that have been living under a rock, he's running 
1,600 kilometers in what was supposed to be 10 days and a great effort. He's still going to get 1,600 kilometers. Mm. The 10 days is gone. That was the world record. Mm. Raising money for homelessness in Australia. He's absolutely flown past a million dollars. To run three marathons a day, Mm. to get wheeled out by your mum every morning because he can't walk to the track, to be strapped up like that, he is just – he's not like us. Mm-mm. Mate, like not at all. He's not human. There's something there that in his head that goes, you know what? I'm a little, I'm a little bit crazy. Mm. I've got a little bit of craziness in me. Mm. There's a screw loose to do that. Just to he and we talk about being a dog. Mm-hmm. He is the definition of being a dog. Like mm-hmm. that's that's it when we say it. To be able to do that, it's not not like a, as I said before, a cavoodle, a toy poodle, a little Shih Tzu. Get out of here. Mm. Mm. We're talking. Doberman, mm. German Shepherd, Staffy, Pitbull. Ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Insane. And I think you touched on it perfectly in your video. You go, we just had the Melbourne Marathon. Imagine that two more times that day. Mm. <laughs> and then we do it all again. Then you do it again for another nine days. And now that he hasn't got the record, Mate. 12 days. And I mean, we, we created with Gatorade an ongoing content piece about you doing the run, and we dined on that all year. Literally, and you think and it's about it's nothing. Like, it's nothing. And there was a funny comment on that video. It was like, um, yeah, he's just doing the North Melbourne lose by run by. <laughs> I was like, that's very, very funny, very good, but just crazy. Like, we won't see anything like that. Everyone said um, David Goggins mm, potentially. Have, yeah, <sighs> just their freaks. Is he the English guy? He is the American guy, shaved head, who's going to carry the boats. Oh, Who will go yeah. the boats? I was thinking if you've seen the, the guy from England with the red beard and he goes, day 45 of running the entire length of Africa. I have seen that guy actually. Yeah. I think maybe Wayne Rooney his name is, soccer player. No? His name is Wayne Rooney got, got big as shit. Rooney. Sorry? Wayne Rooney got big. Oh, yeah. Didn't he? Is that real, that photo? Yeah. Those who've seen that photo looks really big. What was <laughs> happening? Um, oh yeah, Ricky Olerenshaw is in Bali running brothels allegedly. <laughs> that story broke last night, Ale- and again we'll say allegedly because nothing has been, uh, you know, he hasn't been in court, been convicted of it. Sure, but allegedly this came out. It's happened. So bad week for us in the media. Had the Nick Hines stuff about bringing certain characters into the the mm-hmm. changes, which I still am cautious of saying, given that I think figures of the underworld listen to the podcast. Mm. But he said, hey, the, the AFL said to him, stop bringing in some some underworld figures. And then a former player runs a brothel. Bad week for them. Real bad week. <laughs> but it's not about them. It's about this week, especially with three days to go, everyone thinking that they're a list manager this week. Feels like clubs want to make moves. I don't know what it's about it, but every club believes that they're probably a trade away from winning flag, which I get that feeling. Mm -hmm. A lot of activity this trade period. A lot. It feels like maybe the draft isn't as strong as what people think it is, what we thought it was. Shift to Sheehan comes out and tells us that maybe it is another super draft. I don't think so. It feels like every team wants to bring in ready-made players and give out their first round picks, except for Richmond. Mm. Richmond <laughs> saying, give it to us. Yeah. They, they're going to have 19 picks inside the top 20, <laughs> the way they're going. <laughs> like they're building a serious squad in six years. be very, very good. Yeah, like That's all that's really happened so far. It's Monday morning now. It's episode about a few hours. So you will be all over it. If well, something breaks. Yeah. I am struck because I feel like your laptop might have like, you know, um, how to escape from uh, <laughs> Harry Potter prison sheet codes, like yet left, right, Blink, Blink 182, yeah, 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 three exactly. different tabs. So if something breaks, you'll be all over it, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll give it my absolute best. Great, thank you. But boring first five days of the trade period so far, shit all happened. We had two trades. Alex Neil Bullen went to Adelaide and the other was Jack Darling in North Melbourne, which was pretty much a salary dump from West Coast, if mm-hmm. being completely honest. And apart from that, shit all happened. We had some free agents get comboed, which yep. is very confusing. We still, I don't, and I don't get how. I now get it, given that we talk about it on a daily basis. But if you're the everyday punter who just likes your team, you'd have no idea what language they're talking about. Compos and points and all that stuff. It's very confusing. I very hate confusing. it. And, and, and literally, we were just talking about uh, NFL fantasy teams. That's stressful enough. Mm. What to do with Justin Jefferson because it's a bye week? Yeah. Got to trade in something. And this on top of that, mate, stressful for you. I don't mate. get it. Shows for you, but Harry Perriman joined the Pies on a six year massive amount of money deal. Takes him to 31 years of age, getting that bank, mm-hmm. getting that bag, getting paid a shit ton of cash to be a pie. The Giants get pick 16 returners combo. Josh Battle, how do you feel about this? Officially made his way to the Hawks. Now we know, last time we spoke this, wasn't allowed the best of Verist. Mm-hmm. No one said a nay, his name. Mm-hmm. The one that we shall not speak of mm-hmm. is how they referred to him. Get pick eight back as combo. Happy? <laughs> I think, I think you take that every day of the week. Yeah. 
Pick eight's good. A pick eight is unbelievable. So now you have pick seven and eight so far. And can I just say, I love Josh Battle, but we were not Josh Battle away from winning the flag. No, you weren't. But who knows? We could potentially be a pick eight away at some point in our future. True. So you take, I, you just, you, you take that. Now you got pick seven and pick eight. What is the war chest doing this period? I thought we were going to be active and busy. It doesn't feel like we're doing much. Uh, we're jingle jangling. But not enough. No. You got a war chest there. McRae. Yeah. And like you've got to jangle it. The only thing is I don't want to be jangling for jangle's sake. True. That's the worst thing we could do. You know, yeah, you cannot be stuck in that land. Like. You need, you need to make sure the jangle's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did sign Max King to, or, um, or Ben to, I don't know, like a 15, 20 year deal. <laughs> that, or something was all, like that. That, that was, was extreme, that deal. You know. That's big. A lot of noise on that contract saying, hey, is this guy going to be the guy that carries to a flag? Is this guy, if his knee's good enough, can he, can he see his structure, physical structure with yeah. the muscle on it right now, hold us in good stead going forward? I can th- it, Ollie? I think so. You happy with it? I think so. Okay. Well, that happened. Jack Graham is now an eagle. Two-time yep. premiership player from the Tigers moves to Perth. Gets pick 42 back in return. Richmond do. And there was massive amounts of uproar. Pick 42 for a two-time premiership player. Wow. How does this work? Why does it work like that? And then we all calmed down and worked. Okay. This is how the system works in the AFL. The AFL determines that the compo is decided by the player's age um, and the contract offered to that player going to the new club. So in this case... The Eagles getting Jack Graham must have meant, well, his age is a little bit older mm-hmm. than, I guess, a younger player. Is the only way to put it. He's older. <laughs> yeah. And the new contract being offered by West Coast to Jack Graham was as much as your Perrymans or your Josh Battle. Sure. So that's why Pick 42 came back, which is a flawed system maybe. Yeah, but he, wasn't he a, a free agent or an unrestricted free agent? Mm, one of the two. So it's like I don't think – we deserve – like, I, I don't think that we deserved any pick for Josh Battle, for Just example. let him go. Well, that's that's the club's fault for not yeah. trading them when they're in contract. But it's all about the AFL them. making it a level playing field, so you have to get something back. Yeah. You know, I know, Ollie, it's very – there's been a lot of arguments on Twitter. I've been right in thick of it yeah. as a silent battler. But a lot <laughs> On your happened. burner account? So, yeah, yeah, not Dan Grange. But apart from that, nothing had happened. We were waiting saying, hey, this is supposed to be an active trade period. It's Friday. We're five days into this thing. Nothing has happened. What's going to happen? Please, someone do something. We saw Brisbane trade a, a little handful of picks for another pick. And we said, ugh. Yeah. Boring. 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 And then Friday afternoon, as we're unaware, just a bomb gets dropped on the leg. Hawthorne blew everybody's plans up. We all had plans with this pick 14, their first round pick, which was going to be the pick to unlock Barras and get Barras from West Coast to Hawthorne. That's what we all assumed. And that pick that West Coast would hold, pick 14, was going to get on sold to Richmond for Baker. That's what we thought. And Richmond said, you know what? It's been five days. We've been talking. We've tried to be nice with you guys. Mm. We've tried to be civil. You keep messing us around. So you know what, West Coast? Fuck around and find out. Trade it to Carlton, and now everyone's going to find a plan B for players they want. Crazy in the scheme of things. So now the question is, how does does Barras still get there? Does he still get there? We're thinking maybe it's a future first, a future second. Somehow they're still going to do a deal. Barras and Baker spent the weekend just not really sure. That sick knot in the stomach all weekend, not knowing. Because it's embarrassing saying goodbye. Oh, you've got to get ready to go back. <laughs> you've got to get yeah, – I think, I think right now we've decided if you haven't been traded on Monday afternoon, Monday night, you've got two days left. Yeah. Start making peace with that first day back, that first WhatsApp message back to the group saying, mm. boys, pretty funny, wasn't it? Yeah. Got, got ya. ya. <laughs> got ya. It's very much um, Mr. G when he decides to leave. You go, <laughs> shove, him, yeah, shove these flowers up your ass, my group. <laughs> yeah. You hey, know. fellas. He's got punked. Yeah. I'm back. It is a very awkward experience. Now, I experienced it once when I boldly, after my 16 games, <laughs> said, hey, I'm sick of this shit on the Gold Coast. I'm out. Yeah. And did the whole port thing, which has been well documented. Then you have to come back into the club and it's very <laughs> – it is hard to build those bridges. The playing group's okay because the playing group is going to play footy. And whoever they just want, whoever on the field next to them is going to do a job and have their back. Which yeah. players, and you just do it naturally. But in terms of your relationship with coaching staff mm. higher up on the board, that is fractured. There is there is stuff that happens with that relationship that you cannot repair. So I think, as I said, if you haven't been trained right now, it's 3.30. 
get prepared to be going back and say, boys, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. That was funny. Jokes. Jokes. So that's where it's at right now. So we're, hope, we're thinking then Tom Morris, who we said is a businessman in Australia right now, is still thinking that this deal gets done still with futures. Mm-hmm. But geez, I think Barras would be looking at some other clubs and maybe some other clubs come prying for his services and say, how can we get him to Melbourne still? Because his sister's here. We know that. We know he loves his sister. That's the pulling card. But how can we get him to our club? Still get him in Melbourne. Geelong? Shit hole. Down there. We know that. But how would you get him here? So that's where that's at right now. Wow. A lot of work there to be done between the Hawks and the Eagles. And one thing, we were talking about Geelong. Yeah. Stop playing bullshit games with us, Ollie. What's happening there? What's happening with Bailey? Because dogs are threatening to walk him the draft if they don't get a top 10 pick. They currently have pick 17. Surely the dogs flinch here and take 17. What do you know you're not telling us? <laughs> I don't Spit know. Spit it out. Spit it out of your dirty mouth. Who's to say that he's going there at all? Oh, you are never- <laughs> mate. He has told us. He has nominated them. Yeah, okay. Is that So you're going to remain tight-lipped, which I get because that's your friend and it's a very close relationship and we love Bailey and I get that. But at this moment, just let him walk, don't you? Yeah. Well, I tell you no, what, let him go. Sorry, let him go with pick 17. Don't let him walk. No, 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 totally. Take Dogs, take 17. What I will say is I, I will go, okay, yep, fair enough. Yep, he does want to go to Geelong, but what I won't say is who the backup team. Oh, that's smart. Okay, great. Thank because you. Because I'm aware of who is the plan the, B is. The plan B Okay, is. so this is plan B. But I think he's, all, he's pretty much all set ready to go to Geelong. Bags are packed. Yeah. They've got Geelong yeah. stickers on him. Yeah. He's ready to go. So if he doesn't, if he gets walked to the draft by the dogs and the dogs uh, do a Hawthorne and say, hey, if you're going to fuck around, find out. Mm-hmm. That means that any club can take him in the draft, but they just have to match his contract offer. Can you just explain it again? So if he gets oh. walked, so if the dogs say pick 17 is enough, you we're going to walk you the draft and leave it up to the hands of Geelong to have nice relationships with other clubs around him. With all the clubs that have picks before their pick 17, we're going to walk you there and good luck running the gauntlet with a Richmond, mm-hmm. a Gold Coast, a Carlton of two picks, St Kilda 7-8. Mm-hmm. That's what that meant. Walk him there and say that. So if they take him, if St Kilda were to take him or whoever it would take, it would be, they say, okay, Bally, we're going to draft you and they have to be willing to match whatever contract that his manager has drawn up, say it's 1.1, mm-hmm. they have to be prepared that, all right, we're going to put you on 1.1 for six years and then get <laughs> Bailey to actually play and actually want to be there. That's the big thing about it all. But surely that just, as a club, why would you? I heard someone on the radio go this morning say, oh, I wish we should take a pick one. Why would you? <laughs> that would be a bit rogue. It'd be rogue as, but like, it, it's a massive gamble. They, it never works for that. And if they do get walked, they normally get through their club. Yeah. So that's where that situation yeah, is right now. I, I mean, it's a it's a big player and it's a big deal, but from the outside, the trade looks relatively simple. Twenty three, like, come off an ACL. When he was twenty, he he was dominating games of football. We forget because what we do in here in this league in this yeah. industry, we just forget that shit. That players are really good at football. Once they've been out of the game, they they're really good. Bailey's a really good footballer. A year off, he seems locked in. Been a lot of talk about him being active on socials. Too active, I will say that. I'll be a bit of an old dad here. I'm going to be dad. It was a little bit, a bit of, too active. A little bit active. <laughs> a little bit active. Maybe you should tell him, hey, like it's, it's three days to go. Yeah. Just less stuff for socials for three days. Yeah. Maybe. But good player. 23 years. He'll go Great down player. there and dominate. Uh, guess who's not off the socials? Who? Tom Morris. What's he done? Uh, so this is okay. I've learned essentially. I've logged into Twitter. I forgot my login. Yep. So we're good now. Just I breaking. Mean, breaking. It's not that exciting, but hear me out. North Melbourne had its initial proposal for Caleb Daniel rejected by the Western Bulldogs. Ooh. The ruse have floated pick 25 uh, and pick 48. Wow. So that has been rejected for now. That is big. Two helmets running around North. Oh, I've never that's... seen a team with two helmets. Never in my life. If North get two helmets to the team, pack it up, climb it up the ladder, finish in 17th. I think you're right. I don't think I can't. It's certainly not off the top of my head. Darling, Parker, Helmet Daniel with Helmet Sherry. Guess where we're finishing? 16th. Yeah. Bring that on. That's right. exciting. Watch this space. So he clearly wants to go now. He would have told uh, Bulldogs. Kanga, kanga, kanga. <laughs> wow. Okay. Bye, bye, bye. Watch that. All right. Well, back to the, the Bailey Smith. Geelong Dogs have yep. three days to work this thing out. Let's meet out for them. Okay. Let's try and give them an example of how we mediate these yep, things. Yep, okay. Okay, so Anna wanted a dog. Mm-hmm. I didn't want a dog. We came to a compromise mm-hmm. and we got a dog. Sure. So dogs. The cats want a dog. Pay, pick 17 because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
it's a dog. Yeah. You know? And you want a dog now. Yeah. So just do it. Just and, get it done. And you and know what? How much do you love your dog now? Love, love, love Madden. So they are going to love that dog. They are, They will. They'll take good care of him. Yeah. And he's a dog. He's a dog. But Pick 17, like Geelong, you don't even want Pick 17. You're a destination club. You, What you do is you don't rebuild. No. So you don't even need first-round draft picks. You let the other clubs do that and then you you say, hey, we're going to offer you a, a different kind of lifestyle. Well, yes, we're going to offer you a shit all of a city. <laughs> there is shit all to do in here in this heap of a joint that we're going to go to this week and do a vlog on Ooh. to see why, why he wants to go there. But there's nothing here. <laughs> We've got a Ferris wheel. We've got people drinking their coffees out of mugs. Yeah. But that's what you do and you sell it and people come there. So you don't need pick 17, really. Nope. You need Bailey Smith to go there. So watch this space on that. Did you see track in Austria? Yeah, on whatever the hell that- I don't know what that machine NASA was. Training. I found out. Yeah. It's a G-Force machine. There you go. Knew it was NASA related. So is he training himself to be sprinting at a G-Force kind of level? <laughs> I mean- That's all we can assume. That machine was scary. He had an Austrian lady just barking at him as well. <laughs> that, that go, 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 go. Looked like the worst Eastern European <laughs> oh, sex God. club of all time. <laughs> I was like, shouted out. Oh, I thought I was track. I said, lady, I'm trying my hardest. Stop yelling, go at me. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's maybe <laughs> the only word the you might know, word. but yeah. yeah, stop yelling at But that's scary. He looks scary in that machine. That's comeback season. It track. looked real, um, you know, doing any workout after that is very much like taking the training wheels off. Yeah. That oh, is doing yeah. a hundred meter sprint with, Weights on the back yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. And then just doing a 100 meter sprint. He's going to be locked in. Obviously, you know, the BNF and then went to Austria to do that. But when you see that, I go, okay, piss the BNF off. If he's doing that <laughs> in a G-Force machine, he's locked in. He's clearly very locked in. He's yeah. always been locked into his football. It's been the real core thing about him. Heard a whisper. A lot of whispers going around. A lot of stuff comes across the desk. A little whisper for you. Apparently, he's so locked in him and his partner. Got the on-track brand. Got his football stuff. That when he has a bad... Now, I trust his source enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and most of the stuff we say on this show is so dumb and stupid, but it's obviously comes from somewhere. We don't just okay. run stupid stuff, oh, do we? Sometimes I remember you said, oh, this comes from a source on Twitter called Neil. <laughs> it was, but anyway, yeah, I see your point. They're so locked in football as a couple, which is great. I love that. They're so locked in <laughs> that if he has like a bad kicking game in mm. front of goal, kicks one, two or one, three or whatever, or three points, that during the week, him and his partner will go down, she'll take him down to an oval with goals and stand the mark and make him kick goals. Love it. Came across my desk. <laughs> That's all I'm I saying. Why does Anna do that with me? Well, I mean, it's... it's. <laughs> I'd love that. If Anna said to me, hey, let's go to the park and have some set shots, oh, <laughs> I love I'd you, say, babe. get that baby out, let's make another one. Yeah. Let's go. But And it's just another reason why now I'm just, I'm even more shitty at Margot Robbie. Mm. Because not only did she break your heart, but she ruined a potential superstar. Yeah, she exactly. Been there. She could have been down there. Could have been that. Yeah. I know. She missed out. She did. Um, also, not in Austria, but in, I think it's Yarraville or across the bridge somewhere, Bont. Mm. Wheel and just wheelbarrows full of concrete around. What? You see that story? No. So he's got a new cafe. I think it's called Arthur's over there. Okay. And you got your players in Austria, you got your players <laughs> in America doing these crazy, you know, these crazy training camps trying to get ready. He says, give me a wheelbarrow full of concrete and a crew of builders. Mm hmm. And I'm going to train and I'm going to put them on my back and build an amazing cafe. Mm. I loved it. And Seen how many cameras? The tools. Mm. Just did something for me. Okay, all, the cool. boy, all the doggies boys are there building this cafe. Got James Harms yeah. running around, picking stuff up. Maybe I'll go past. We could drive by and we need a hand lay on. a few bricks. Or just in the area. Not yeah. near at all. I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was great. Good on him. Good on, what a man. What can't he do? I can't win a brown loan. I can't win a brown loan. There's that. But he can win best cafe. Sure. Well... We'll be the judge of that. Well, like, uh, you know, I know my cafe sandwiches. You do. What do you look for in a cafe? So it gives, if Bond listens, I'm sure he does. Mm. What oh, do you yeah. need from Bond? You know what you need? Salt and pepper on the tables. In Queensland, don't do it. Weird state. Don't put salt and pepper on the tables. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a, it's not a, you know, a restaurant on Ligon Street, mate. Hey, Ollie. I want salt and pepper on the table. I shouldn't be asking for salt and pepper. What sort of cafe? Is it a, a dine-in cafe? Ca I, I'm telling you. Like an egg situation? I love, I love Queensland. A bit different up there. No, I know. No, Arthur's though. Kino was great. <laughs> Not sure how Kino works. Because <laughs> I got six in one game and what I added up to was $1,500. But I put the ticket in and said, you've won $3. Sure. Okay. I won four. I played 20 games. <laughs> $3. I put 20 in. Anyway, but the cafes up yeah. there. So I want salt and pepper on the table, Ollie. For what though? 
for to salt and yeah, pepper yeah, my yeah, food. For what? For what? But what eggs, you? anything. You, right. put, you name it, I put salt on it. Okay, and you need that in. Okay, there's a cafe up the road, just a walk in one. Is that what? You're yes, t- yes, on tables. I can't believe this isn't a big deal for you because you sit down and shower. That's why you don't get it <laughs> like I do. So, what you don't want salt and pepper on the table when you walk in? I didn't say that. Do I'm you sa- use salt and pepper? I'm specifically asking you what type of cafe You've it is. You've got some nerve, mate. Because <laughs> Snarf and Chuckle up the road there don't need salt and pepper. Yeah, Snarf and Chuckle can piss off then. <laughs> because they've already <laughs> Actually, got- friends of us. We love Snarf and Chuckle. <laughs> but they've got the big bagels and the wraps- Yes. Made in the Bain Burritos ready to go. It's one. Of, it's a walking cafe. I know. What I'm asking you is this, Daniel. Yes. When we walk into Arthur's, yes. is it like a proper sit down? We'll have like an Eggs Benedict- uh, like a, a meal. Yes, yes. Then we better have salt and pepper on the table. We better have fucking salt and pepper there. Otherwise, they've got a big issue and it'll be me. Okay? Moving on. I had another week off. <laughs> what are Collingwood <laughs> up to, man? What are they doing? What are they doing at the moment? Oldest list in the league. They're throwing away draft picks. It's like they're literally saying, hey, fuck these draft picks, we're going for another flag Mm -hmm. at the moment. Went and got Perryman, now they're in the market for Dan Houston. If they get Dan Houston, we've got a super team. Not fair, not fair to have him. Not fair to get him and Perryman Mm. in the trade period. That's not great. It's not great for us. That means we're cooked. It's like, because everyone earlier was like, the Blues might get him, but now Collingwood are in the hot seat. But if they get him with Dacos, Perryman, Bobby Hill, Dan McStay, who's at a full (laughs) preseason. Pack it up, put a nice bow on it, give them a flag again. That's not fair. Yeah, Can't do that. That's a problem for us. But you know what? I wonder if we'll ever see a super team. What do you need for a super team? So say that Bailey Smith, um, Houston, Oliver, yeah. Bolton and Baker were like, you know what? Let's go to the Magpies for two to three years on 300, 400 max each. And let's go try and win three flags for three years. Will that ever happen or not? I, I tell you what, it feels a bit like that at Geelong at the moment anyway. It does. Well, they got down there. We'll find out in the vlog. We'll, we'll figure that but out. But do you think it'll ever happen? Uh, yeah, I think it will. And I picture it, uh, the, the way I picture it happening, and you won't like this, but hear me out. Let's just say. Yuck already. Let's just say at the end of next year, Carlton don't make finals oh. or whatever. And your nucleus go, look. We gave it a red hot go, but it's just it's it's time, it's right? And then everyone leaves for four years, but there's still a WhatsApp group, and they go, you know what? I think we go again. Let's all do it. Let's go. Let's bring it back. Let's, let's bring it back and try. I reckon I could see that happening. It's not out of the realms of possibilities because they all train together in the off season. We've seen Bailey Smith hanging out with the Dacos boys. We've seen yep. um, the Hills training with some of the Doggies boys. So they yep. all train together. All were, I'm thinking we build a super team out there. Someone does that. Well, you'll go and win two or Ta- three flags. Right, and you know what? First one could be Tazzy. Mm, let's not get too carried away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they need a stadium first. Well, and a team officially. Yeah. But it'll, yeah, maybe. But after that, mm, you never know. Well, Dan Houston is a big ticket here. Let's stay on him for a bit. One, so the whole situation is just uh, messy, you know, very messy. So one out of port, then said, I'm staying at port. Then goes to his exit meeting and says, I want to leave port if they can get a deal done. And if they can't, I'm happy to stay at port. <laughs> hey, Dan, what do you want to do? Just tell, just, I know you're a, you're a lovely guy. You're my favorite port player. I've got your Guernsey. Yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. Do you want to go or stay? Because yeah. what you've just told me, is nothing, really. So then Carlton were leading the race room early. They had an argument with Port apparently about pick 12. They said we're not part of pick 12. Port arrogant. Too much. Arrogant, they were called. Very arrogant. And I've learned one thing in this period. You don't call another team arrogant. No. Then Carlton <laughs> got pick 14 from Hawthorne. And the AFL world said, well, hold on. Maybe this is a move for Houston. Maybe they're happy to part ways to pick 14 and still keep their pick 12. Maybe that's why they did it. Mm-mm, not the case at all. They want to keep those two picks for something else. The Tegan and the Twins. Mm-hmm. Camparelli twins mm. is what they're after big time. And now making a play to go to pick three from the Eagles, which is big. Carlton are cooking something up. I'm not sure what it is. Mm. They're cooking something. Yeah, Could they be in the market for Barass? They just put Wedering, signed him to a six-year extension. I saw that. Oh. Yeah. I don't get, put that with Nab, brother. <laughs> what I <laughs> That'll get, be gone like that. I, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> she gets a call today. Hello, Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Um, I am Greg from Nab. 
just wanted to say congrats <laughs> on the six year deal. If you can transfer me the whole money to zero uh, BSB yeah. zero eight three zero zero four account number, we will look after that for you. It's like that episode of South Park, and I'll just put that in a saver, and it's gone. <laughs> Yeah, be careful, Nab. It's gone. That's his biggest danger, this deal. <laughs> not not his health, not his longevity, just the bank account it goes into. Just go full analog mode, I reckon, That's mate. a big Do one. use checks? Yeah. No, no phones, no That's computers. The big one. But you had a thought about Barass. Uh, you know, what, the, the vibe that I'm getting right now from Carlton is very much like, you know when you see online those painters and they're doing a quick painting and you're going, that shit, like what are they? Mm. Like, what? What? I'd, yes. And then, and then they go, but wait, and I'll flip it upside down. Oh my God, it's a masterpiece. And then it makes sense. Yeah. That's that's a great way. That's a great it's vibe sort of to just put a bit it. Like, I don't, I can't join the dots here yet. Yeah. But Something's, they're building something. I'm not sure. I think they want to get into the draft. They think Walsh's cousin. I'm not, I can't remember his name. We should know that given we're a sports show. Is Sam it Walsh? Walsh's cousin. Is it is, a Walsh? Or no, a... I'm not sure. I don't think so. Is in the draft. The best mid they're thinking outside of Levi. And they think that they want to make a play for him to bring him in straight away. So they think they've got a stud. Finno Sullivan. Yeah. I think they've got a stud ready to go next to Walshy, which would be – is it the piece the Blues need? What? What? Okay, irrespective of a player's name, mm. what's the position? What's the piece? Small forward. Matty That's always wants 800K. <laughs> you see that, that cool? <laughs> yeah. Matty always – I love you, Matty always. You're a blue bagger. You will be for life. But not primary bets. Mm. You know? But not... Not a Tom Papley. But it wasn't... Well, it's also but not, not five, six years ago. No, but also... but And he's also not a four that's doing nothing. So he's in... Let's split the difference. 175. <laughs> he's worth way more than that. Okay. 220. Okay. Happy? No, I'd give him... If he, if he wanted to go to the Saints, I'd give him... 580. Oh, what? Okay. That's all. actually probably fair enough given where the deal's at today. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's probably five, eight, 700, 800 were the reports and then everyone's, oh, then I was a bad guy for reporting it. Yeah. I was like, guys, listen, I, 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 this is the go here. I report on what's being reported. If, it, if the clubs, are, someone's like, oh, it's not a good look for him and his management, you should take that down. Hey, crazy person. If they're coming to me for mm. reliable sources on Dan does footy Instagram, you're in the wrong place. And sure. that means get a new management. Because mm. I'm not – I, I just report on the reports mm. and bring it to you guys in a, a different kind of way. Yeah. That's how this works, you crazy person. Yeah. Okay, go do butterfly somewhere or sit down in the shower. But back on Dan Houston. So I was Collingwood who were in the box seat for him. Pick 13 is the thing and the pick that we think is going to unlock this and a lot more. That is the Gold Coast pick right now that Collingwood want. They also want to get John Noble and the future first for pick 13. Okay. And pick 23 back. Now – is it just me and the way I'm vibing at the moment, but is that a lot for John Noble? So well, John Noble yeah. and a future first, Collingwood, for Suns pick 13 and 23. Well, this is, this is a guy they didn't even want playing in the grand final. No. He's a very good player. He's a very good player and that Gold Coast Sun is hot. And his skin complexion is pasty. There could I be a should bit of know. Dan Gorridge about him. So in maybe about they're two doing, yeah, maybe they're doing him a favour, saying, "Hey, just it's a well-being thing. Yeah, it's a well-being thing. Yeah, but I think that seems on paper like here. I've got it here. It seems a lot. It does. So who knows? But they, they that's the the pick that they think will unlock that, and then they'll give to Port. But Port still want more than pick thirteen. But now we've got other clubs who are in the race for that pick thirteen. The pick thirteen that is so prized that everyone seemingly wants to get into the draft. Gold Coast don't need or want this pick by by um, any situation. They they don't need it. They've got academy talent in next year's draft, so that's why they're flicking this thing off. The clubs in the race for this pick thirteen right now: Sydney, Melbourne, Dog Saints. Ooh. Imagine if you have seven, eight, and thirteen. Wow. Wagon. 7, 8, 13. Wagon. Wagon. Collingwood and Hawthorne now talking to Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. So that is where his hopes are, Dan Houston, in getting to the uh, yeah, to the pies by Suns giving up that pick 13 to Collingwood. <laughs> That's where he's at. And if that doesn't happen, that leaves Stephen North Melbourne Bradbury. In the race. They currently have pick two at the moment. Brilliant. They might split that pick two for two in the first round and they have money to pay and money to burn and they got a Jack Darling and they've got two helmets. <laughs> kanga, kanga, kanga. Roo, roo, roo. Now we're finishing 15th. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, would he want to go there? Would he want to go? Absolutely not. 
We've already spoke about it in the last episode. Okay. That's a lot of money to just sit off there and have 35 a week, sure, but you're at North Melbourne. Yeah. That's a lot. So that's where he's at right now as it sits at in, in Monday morning. Yep. So watch this space. A guy who is staying at Port is that big son of a bitch who gives his girlfriends whizzies in his living room, <laughs> which we have been told to be careful about saying this because he we know he's upset. Our friend Joey is banned on Instagram by him. <laughs> For reposting that thing. What, just he reposted Because Joey reposted the whizzy and then he tagged him and Mm. said, Ivan Soldo, like, I love that you do this. And Ivan didn't like that and blocked Joey. But Ivan Soldo moved to Adelaide to play for Port. His missus said, this town is a shithole. It's a (laughs) shit city and I want out. And he said, you know what, babe? I agree. Let's get out of here. Spoke to St Kilda, did a medical with St Kilda, didn't fail the medical, but they said, listen, that knee or your body that you've got at the moment, yeah. we're not, we can't do this. No. Which again will lead to you. Do you think that's, you're the St Kilda person? You happy with that? Yeah, I think. No that backup for Marshall? We've got incredibly high standards. We'll, we'll find someone. Oh, but We have incredibly high. <laughs> mate, I did a tour of the gym yesterday, mate. You should see those facilities. That's not for someone with one leg. <laughs> that's <laughs> We wouldn't, al- not, no. we wouldn't allow that in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's the one recruiting thing, no one legs. So now he has to stay in a town that he hates. Mm-hmm. The town knows he hates mm-hmm. to represent a team of the town that he hates and the town that knows that hates <laughs> he hates. That's that's a long sentence. That's way worse than what Dan Houston would have to do if he. Oh stayed. yeah, they can. And now we said you got two days to start saying sorry. Yeah. So he now gets back on the the uh, the sorry train. He says, "Boys, misses." <sighs> Oh, she's a real pill. She's, she's <laughs> driving me crazy, putting these ideas in my right. head. That this town's a shithole. I don't believe it. I love it here. I love it here. Churches, awesome. Oh, Steve, you, you guys been to Red Square lately? Yeah. Dog and Duck. Yeah. 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 Mr. Kim's. Yeah, Mr. Kim's. Highly Street, that one street with a crackhead. Yeah. I'd stay away from that. <laughs> I would stay, stay away, away from, that. from that. But that's where that's at. So now he's just staying in Adelaide. That <laughs> whole story is a bit bizarre. We, she came out and said um, that she doesn't know why she's the centre of attention. Mm. Mm. I mean, you, you called the city boring and left, so that would be why <laughs> that would happen. But I do wish him all the best. Wish him all the best. Hopefully he stays at port. Hopefully that thing gets turned around or hopefully he gets out of port mm-hmm. and they celebrate with one big whizzy to be nude. Um, but <laughs> Richmond, <laughs> what? that's all I'm saying on it because I'm, I'm very careful that we've been told to calm down on it. Um, Richmond are building something though. They're losing stars. Everyone's jumping off this boat, but they're getting a shit ton of draft picks back. And now they've extended Noah Bolter. I saw this seven-year deal deal tying him to the club until 2032 that's a big long deal yeah right a cane what do you if you were what do you th- are you on a cane train on this no, one no, I like you, it. you like it yeah no i'm not doing a cane over here no no i like it i, I like Noah Bolt. i like what he brings i think he's got some weapons that he does he's athletically gifted goes mm. forward goes back i think that richmond losing four or five players in the best 22 they have to pay someone <laughs> well, you, you know? have to no but no you do you have to pay your salary cap Oh. You have to pay – so you have to pay someone. If you're losing four to five plus a Dusty Martin, you can't just not pay the players. The AFL will be like, hey, fill your salary cap up. So you're not allowed to save, essentially. You can't save. So then where does okay, – oh, look, I'm learning a lot. Where does then a St Kilda war chest come from hypothetically? Because I always assumed that was because we had our big dogs leave, you know, sort of post mm. Rui – Hayes, all of that, and we went, right, we'll just sort of hold on to this for a little bit. It's a structure of how you've paid people. Right. So if you've paid, if you've funded a Jack Steele on 1.1 yeah. and now he's coming into the last two years' contract and it was funded, so now it's at 600. Mm. So you know in 2025, hey, we've now got, you know, it's six, seven hundred yeah, to right. spend here somewhere, which we've got to even out around. So does someone get extended? And we, you know, we put that on, or do we go out and sign someone? Sure. That's how that works. So okay. You have to pay the money. You can't just, as you said, you can't just save it up and be like, hey, we've saved for two years. We've got $45 million here. <laughs> that's what I thought <laughs> Let's that go you after Jack McRae. Yeah. That's what <laughs> you know? I, I no. thought they put it in a term no. deposit yeah. or something. <laughs> a bank. Yeah. Smash it out. Um, but Richard and I, but I like the Noah Bolton thing. I think it's good. I think it'll be, it'll be heavily front ended, like we just spoke about. So 800 to a million. And that 800 million right now, the CBA, mm-hmm. is going to look so dear. It'll look like a bargain in 2030. Yeah. Given that Lee's getting more money, everyone's getting paid more money. Long term deal though. I like I mean the long term Kane's got that argument with long term deals. Are they ever worth it? I think the Buddy Franklin one's the only one that's probably been worth it. As in return on your investment, mm-hmm. nine years, ten mil. Yeah. That was good. Dusty was also a long one yeah. as well. But the other ones and the other players that are on long term deals currently, Mac Andrew on a deal to twenty thirty four. 
Noah Bolton, 2032. Max King or Ben King, not really sure, 2032. Aaron Norton, 2032. Connor Rosie, 2032. And Sam Taylor, 2032. And I look at those and I go, league that pays you on potential, not what you're doing right now. We always have been. Always have been. Yeah. You know what I'm also looking at? How mm. good uh, the trade period going to be in 2032? <laughs> It'll be long. <laughs> It'll be long. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Disaster. Like, Those shit, days. I forgot That's about long. that. That yeah. is long. Exactly. And they want to extend the trade period as well, they're thinking. I like that. You want it longer? I love that. Everyone wants it longer. Everyone wants it shorter. But I think what we're not really understanding is these things take like – there has to be conversations here mm. for ongoing days before we see any action. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of flirting. Yeah, there's got a, be lot, a lot it's, of teasing. and. Very rarely do you jump into bed with someone on the first date. No. But like that's a rare thing to do. Yeah. And if you do, it means you're horny. Yeah. And you might regret it the next day. So this is enough time for people to be like, hey. You're going to have, a, you're gonna have an initial get conversation. Let's know each other. Yep. Is this person allergic to seafood? Hawthorne needs to take West Coast for a walk around the town. Yes. Do I want to spend more time with this person? Yeah. Hey, let's meet up at the Gilson. Yeah. And they get there and you say, is this going to be a drink or is this going to be a drink and dinner? Okay. Breath smells. Yeah. This is a drink. <laughs> yeah. Breath mm-hmm. smells, you've been meeting someone before. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who else are you talking to? Yeah. Oh, let's get a drink. Phone lighting up. Yeah. <laughs> is that Tinder going, that's going off? Is that mm. Tom Morris's Tom news Morris feed? I can going see off, it? yeah. Is that you're refreshing? Okay. We'll take pick somewhere else. Yeah. So I, I think it's in, it's, a, it's a good amount of days. It's long, but it's a good amount. Yeah. Okay, it's hard to get your head around. What won't go away anytime soon is Clayton Oliver to Geelong. <laughs> now, there's a leak somewhere in this football club that I'm not sure where it is, but stuff keeps just getting out. Brad Green had to jump on Twitter during the week to shut the story down, said that Clayton Oliver, the 3 w broke a story saying Clayton Oliver has cleared his locker and does not want to return to Melbourne. And Brad Green got on Twitter, President Brad Green got on Twitter and said, hey, this stuff happens all the time, a complete non-story once again. Yeah, but can I say, I didn't read it like that. How did you read it? <laughs> <laughs> Complete non-story. <laughs> this sort of thing oh. always happens. It was a bit of aggressive, passive aggress. Pop, yeah, pop your phone away. Oh, okay, that's the way. So I that's read how you've that. taken it. I think he's right, but it felt very like again. Yeah, it's this club and and not knowing how Fucking to deal PR. with PR. Melbourne things. and PR. They, I, we're telling, we're going to sign them up to a PR course because how easy would it be at some point? Clayton could say, "Oh yeah, no that." No, we all did that. Mm. And you go, ah, oh, right, I, okay. Melbourne oh, are the worst club, and I'll say it again, the worst club at dealing with any sort of incident, event, news story in the AFL yep. by a country mile. Yep. Because Max Gorn is also on holiday, they can't just oh, like, Max, no. where's Max? But hey, something is broken we don't like, get Max in front of a camera right now. Like, they can't do that. So they've shown us again and again that they are just the worst at handling any situation. Yeah. They are. But I kind of I, – I was with you at the start. I thought – I read this, thought, oh, passive-aggressive, don't like that. And then I thought, hold on, with everything that's happening, maybe it is good. Maybe as a Melbourne fan, you'd be like, I actually like a bit of emotion and someone saying, hey, enough is enough. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's the Andrew Bassett argument of, yes, from an outsider's point of view, yeah. silly speech, mm-hmm. but from a, a lifelong St Kilda member, you're like, yeah, good. Like, you like it. Let's, yeah. let's pump things up a little bit here. I think we can all agree, though, given what the, the tweet and the Clary stuff that's been going on, we can all come to the conclusion pretty safely that he wants out. Yeah. He wants out of there. Yep. He wants to leave. The contract that he's in is impossible to get him out of. So he, it's, he's not going to get to Geelong, we don't think. And Tom Morris has actually, no one works harder than him, said, Clan Oliver is on $1.35 million for the next six years. He's owed about $8.1 million in those six years. There's no way Geelong is paying him one point two a year. That is not how they do things. Which is fair enough. So it would take Clary a huge pay cut. His manager's not going to go, hey, Clary, let's get out, let's leave four million on the table yeah, and yeah. go to Geelong. Wouldn't that be fun? Like his, if his manager does that, worst manager in the world. Yeah. He's not going to do that. So he's going to stay in Melbourne, we think, unless something crazy happens come Wednesday, which I don't think will happen. Um, uh, <laughs> Free Manor, we'll cover Free Manor. We're going through all the, the players here, if you haven't caught on by now, that are uh, in trade talks. We know they're far away. And they have scary as shit fans. Yep. Because apparently you and I don't talk about them enough. No. But we're about to talk about them now. They're doing some things. They're building a squad out west. They put picks 10, 11, and 18 to Richmond for Baker and Bolton. That is wild. That's why Richmond will have 19 picks inside the top 20. And Mm. I, in my heart of hearts, still believe Bolton is a top 10 player in this league. Yep, I agree. When he wants to play. 
When he wants to be there and he wants to be a player, he is a top 10 player. And if they can convince Baker now to not go to West Coast and go to Freo instead, which might happen given everything that Hawthorne did on Friday, pack the league up. That's your super team. Yeah. It's That's got, unfair. It's got a bit of super team about it. You can't do that. You can't, you can't have what you've got already, just miss out in finals, and then say we're going to add Baker and Bolton. Mm-hmm. Pack it up. Not fair, Freo. Not fair at all. That's a that's dangerous squad. Dangerous squad. Which then leaves, as we get to the end of the episode, still to be done. Dan Rioli, Gold Coast Suns pick six, we're thinking. Lacocious to Port for a first round, and they'll take on most. He's on a huge contract. Huge money. Yep. So they're going to take on most of that contract. Peatling to Adelaide, which I would like Peatling as a player. Okay. He is a dog. And this one, contract stringer for picks 53 and 56 from the Giants. They'd want to put him on a one-year deal. <laughs> <laughs> if he, if contract stringer gets a two-year deal, he's not doing shit on yeah. an off-season program right now. I like it. I can visualize it. I can close my eyes. I can see him in the stealth. Hogan goes up for a mark, he crumbs something, snaps goal. And it is more often than not quite difficult to picture anyone mm. in a Giants get up. No, yeah. So I, I really like Stringer to the Giants if that happens. Just on a one year, you're thinking. I would, I'd, I even six months. <laughs> I'd ask the AFL, hey, is there any way- Rounds one it? to 12. <laughs> is there any way that we could do a month by month basis structure with him just to keep him motivated because every 30 days it's just up and down in terms of motivation yeah. if we can that'd be great that'd be awesome that's where i'd be right with him um we talk about helmet daniel going to north <laughs> <laughs> jack i mean caleb daniel's his name uh mccray to the war chest yep still excited about this yeah no i'm pretty happy it'll um there's no well. where's he playing a wing mid side inside mid i think we could probably use an inside mid to be fair mm. yeah now that crouch is um cfo or has he formally retired i I, I don't know. No. Okay. Well, his business must be running by itself then. Um, and Noble <laughs> to the Gold Coast Suns. And as I was in Burley Heads getting my almond latte, iced almond latte, because it was 25 degrees, anything over 25 degrees, you should get an ice anything, mm-hmm. ice long black, ice latte, ice almond latte, they are the rules of coffee. Mm-hmm. Okay. I sat there and someone said, hey, um, I just, I'm a real estate agent in the area. Dusty Martin just bought a house up the hill. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? What does that mean? He's moving to the Gold Coast. I think he's going to play for the Suns. Mm. I've been on it since Feb. <laughs> I have ridden this thing on the ground. I have to die by this thing. But you know what? The reason why that all just makes sense is because we can also just see Dusty yeah. 100% living on the Gold <laughs> Coast. Like, I think that that's just the, the bulk of it. Yeah, you're so right. He either hates Melbourne so much and the media that he wants to get away from it and just live in Burley yeah. or he's going to play for the Suns. So that real estate agent, I believe wholeheartedly because irrespective of if he's going to play, oh, yeah. I can so – and he, he just would enjoy it. I have no doubt. I said, what kind of house is it? He goes, very nice. Very, very nice on the hill there. Ooh. Okay. Where is it? Show me. Went in his car, had a look at it. <laughs> I made that bit up. No, I didn't. But they're the, th- they're the whispers I'm hearing. Wow. The whispers I get. I love trade week because there's, as we said, a bunch of whispers. You don't know what's real, what's not. That real estate, he might not even be in a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> he just says, I know that's Dan from Dan's footy. Hang I'm going to make some shit up here. What was he wearing? Because I can tell a real estate <laughs> yeah, agent yeah. by. A- exactly. He had. um. The uh, chinos like this. Oh, uh, well, yep. A real estate agent. <laughs> real estate agent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had those on. So Probably up there that. we would have maybe had a, a white uh, Ralph Lauren polo. A bone kind of polo. Yeah. No, he had a, He had this. It was, it was still like 24, 25 degrees yeah. at this point. Had this on, had uh, a white polo. Yep. And then like a bone uh, jacket. Shoes? What, uh, like boat mm, shoes? No, or? I didn't get a good look at the shoes. I okay. can't remember. I was making eye contact with him because he said, you Dan from Dan's footy. I said, well... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not does footy. No. <laughs> How someone the other day goes, "Hey, I'm so sorry. I've been um, I've been calling it Dan Doe's footy." Dan Doe's. I was like, "What do you mean?" It's like, "Oh, when I read it for the, like the last eight months, I've been in my head going Dan Doe's footy." Dyslexic. Hmm. A little bit. <laughs> it's Dan. That's does. okay. All good to be something, don't we? I mean, we do have all. The we bit. all got. We all have something. I've got lockjaw. Yeah, you do have lockjaw, and You've, you sit in the shower. Yeah. Which is weird. Unrelated. True. True. My dog's in a bad neck at the moment, so he's got that. Hey, before we uh, wrap up, yes, I leave before we wrap up. Can you talk to us about oh, no. uh, that home uh, security system video that you posted? Oh, mother! Yeah, that. Okay, so yes, the first, we can. the first, 
the first video I saw where they threw like your T-shirts or whatever it was was not ideal <laughs> but it didn't really make me laugh. It was whatever. Mm. Then the guy doing a Maradona um, keepy up warm yep. up with your wine yep. was hilarious. Mm, ridiculous. Funny. And then someone. Yeah. Came to the gate, the side gate <laughs> of the house, walking because that's on a street. So they're walking at night and this lady, and I get it. I sure. I get it especially. And we should probably normalise women doing it more. Yeah. Just doing a piss in public. Sure. I get it. Just come through the side gate and with headphones on, looked around, seen no lights on and squatted behind the first gate before you get into like a secondary gate into the door and just pulled the dax down and pissed everywhere. <laughs> what is it about my place that people want to like – like I get it, I get, I get, I get it. But like there, like yeah. you've gone through a gate. You're not on a side street. You've come into my area. You've pissed on my plants. Yeah. I had Jasmine there. I got back there. <laughs> there was what, no was shit. Was that her name? <laughs> I got a Jasmine plant there, trying yeah. to grow up the wall, trying to get it to catch on the things. Because that's what Bunning said. There's a piss stain on the Jasmine. <laughs> the Jasmine's dead. The Jasmine's. The j- Jasmine's there like this. The Jasmine's turning left. I was trying to grow it, but pissed. Yeah. There's a piss stain on my Jasmine. Yeah, there is just something. I mean, yeah, look, I get it. I I have done it, but it's an alleyway. It's a stoby pole. It's a bush. It's a- I have a bit of decorum. Behind a car. It's not it a, is. I'll go through, I'll open a gate. No, no, it's not at all. So that's where that's at, the house. So there's full security system going on right now. <laughs> We've got people on guard from nine to five at night just happening. Walking around, making sure no one pisses and kicks shit. I have never been to your house. You'll see, mate. It's fortress. But I'm going to get you. It's impossible to get into. I'm going to get you at some point. Don't. Yeah, in the camera. Oh, no. What what now? Someone's outside. Yeah, good luck getting in, mate. Playing a game of Quidditch. Good luck luck getting in. Hey, that is Man Monday all done. You are up to date with the trades, what's happening, what's been. Got a bit sidetracked there, but a lot happening around the league. We will be back on Thursday. We're back in action. Trade period to be done. The fallouts, the WhatsApp group saying, sorry, boys, I'm back. All of that shit we will unpack on Thursday. We love you. We'll see you then. Love it. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.